feel like you can't hear, you could come up and get closer if you want. We would love that. Um, let's get started. Okay. Good morning, and thank you all for coming out once again to show your supports for our efforts to educate and improve the city of Wichita in one of the most urgent yet ignored categories, the climate crisis. My name is Anjali Singh, my pronouns are she, ho, ho, and I will be an incoming senior at Wichita East High School. Most of my life, I have thought the way to help the environment is to use like plas less pra plastic and conserve energy. Though these aspects are important, I have found that there is, needs to be much bigger change and more action. Too often, only pe the only people hold are these big corporations and politicians who are neglecting the youth and people who are affected by the crisis the worst. Our leaders need to start listening to the people they represent and create a change rather than making empty promises. Hi, my name is Marissa Rapp. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm going to be a senior at Andover High School. I've had a passion for the conservation of the earth for as long as I can remember. Attending Earhart Environmental Magnet for elementary school, I was taught at a very young age how to reduce, reuse, recycle, take shorter showers, and turn off the water while you brush your teeth. Those things are all really important, don't get me wrong, but that is not and never will be where the meaningful change happens. In March of this year, I spoke to the City Council about creating a sustainability plan of which still has not been made, proving once again that the climate crisis is not being treated as a crisis. So here we are today to reiterate its importance. First, we would like to thank our sponsors, League of Women Voters and Women for Kansas Educational Foundation. Without the... Without them, this event would not be possible. Please go by their tables and check them down, out. We would also like to name all our tables we have today. League of Women Voters Wichita. Women for Kansas Education Foundation. Sunrise Wichita. Cedric County. Cedric County Democratic Women. Wichita Chapter of the Citizens Climate Lobby. X All ICT. Yeah. Prairie Roots. Bag Free Wichita, Encore, Kansas Youth for Climate Justice, Sierra Club, WSU Green Group, and SOAR. Thank you all for coming and supporting our journey. Also, a quick reminder that we are a grassroots organization, which means that we are always looking for new members. If you have a passion for bettering our community and creating a more sustainable city, please do not hesitate to reach out. Each of you has the power to create change on every level. This event started off as an idea, as all great things do, to improve the city of Wichita in an area that often goes unnoticed, the climate crisis. Now here we are with the opportunity to educate and a platform to convey the importance of the climate crisis to our elected officials, who ultimately determine the future of our city's role in climate change. Once again, thank you so much for coming. This event started off as an idea. Today you will hear a wide variety of speakers from a wide range of backgrounds, each of them connected to climate change of di to different aspects of life and offering helpful solutions to these problems. This event, led by teenagers, may seem a little strange, but ultimately, it is our future on the line. We hope that the next time you think of climate change, that climate change doesn't affect you, you think of us. Think of your kids. Think of their kids. If there are any elected or officials or city administrations, administrators here, we would like to thank you for being actively involved in our community and for being here to listen. The first guest that we have today is Jason Lynn, speaking about how to better take advantages of Kansas natural resources to improve our overall sustainability. Jason Lynn graduated from Mays High School in 2020 and is a supporter of the Mays Solar Initiative, which works to install solar power across the Mays school district. He's now a sophomore at Duke University studying chemistry and history and researching radium contamination and groundwater of Texas Hickory Aquifer. Jason Lynn, everybody. All right. Thank you, Marissa and Angeli. That was great. 121.2. That's the record-shattering temperature the Canadian town of Lytton British Columbia experienced two weeks ago. It breaks a record that stood since 1937 by shocking eight degrees. Following that day, 
wildfires engulfed the area, burning 90% of the town and leaving many people with just the clothes on their backs. Now, I'm here today because I believe no man is an island, entire of itself. Although the town of Lytton is 1,500 miles northwest of where I stand today, I believe that the actions we take, the agenda we promote, can and will impact the global climate crisis. But for the better or worse, it's for us to determine here. Now, Kansas, with its abundant solar resources, can and must take a leading role in spearheading the new renewable energy economy. Kansas ranks among the top 10 sunniest states in the nation, comparable to the state of Florida. However, it also averages 200 days of sunshine or partial sunshine each year. But there's just one problem. Kansas, like me most of my life, doesn't have a plan. So, we have exceeded our only goal we have ever set, which is a low-hang voluntary goal of 20% renewable energy by 2020. However, that's not enough. Com that's compared to 150 other cities and counties across 37 states who have already created 100% clean energy commitments. However, an untapped potential exists for solar energy to bridge our gap to 100% renewable energy. Now, despite the ample sunshine we have received, as we're all aware of today, Kansas ranks a dismal 46th in solar energy consumption. That is not enough. With renewables projected to rise dramatically in the future, Kansas must spearhead the renewable energy economy or risk being dragged down with it. Without a renewable energy plan to develop our solar resources, Kansas risks falling behind our peers who already have amassed massive advantages both in early planning and proximity to urban centers. Now, even if the state legislature stagnates like Kellogg during rush hour, Kansas, Wichita, and Sedgwick County must step up and be a leader for the region to set an example. Now, I've already had the privilege of seeing my former mentor, physics and chemistry professor, lead the May Solar Initiative, which had to navigate through incredible financial, logistical, and bureaucratic obstacles to install one of the state's largest private solar arrays at May's high school. Now, every moment we stay idle is a wasted opportunity, both for the, our economic well-being and the well-being for our communities. We call people leaders because they're at the forefront. They're willing to take the risk before anyone else, and they will choose to sacrifice so their people may gain. And in turn, the people will invest their effort back into strengthening the community. We have the opportunity here today to ensure access to clean, affordable, and sustainable energy for all. We have the opportunity here today to create an environment that empowers youth voices rather than suppresses them. We have the opportunity here today to create a future where I can breathe in the fresh air of Nafsker Park while having peace of mind that our climate will continue to be habitable for generations to come. And that is a future worth pursuing. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Kansas has all the resources and then some that it needs to be one of the most sustainable states in the country, yet it ranks 99th out of 100 cities. Why is that? We call for our leaders to step up and take advantage of solar energy and become a leader in the renewable energy industry. This will benefit Kansas in the long run, bringing more jobs to the state and allow us to better utilize the resources that surround us. As Jason said, 
Every moment that we stay idle is a wasted opportunity, both for our economic future and for the well-being of our communities. Let's give it up for Jason once again. Yay! Our next speaker is Alice Fitzgerald. She will be speaking about the importance of acting quickly on climate crisis and how to create a climate action committee. Alice Fitzgerald is a rising junior at Wichita State University where she majors in finance and economics. She also runs the Wichita State Green Group. This oversees the community garden and influences sustainability policies at WSU. Through the, commu through the community garden, she has been able to teach others about gardening, composting, and other easy ways to reduce their carbon footprint. Alice is passionate about making, the sustainability, making sustainability accessible through research, development, and education. Thank you. The Wichita City Council has continued to ignore the issue of climate change. Wichita has the power to pioneer a greener future and be a role model for the rest of the world. To do this, Wichita needs to set goals for their progress. These goals are the only way we can hold the city accountable for its promises. It is important to understand that the city has the ability to address climate change. We stand or sit today um, to, as members of a community demanding change. Let's start with our demands. Demand number one. We need the city to start reducing the amount of plastic that Wichita consumes, especially single-use. We, de we demand that the city find merchants that offer single-use plastic bags. This could also be accompanied with a tax incentive, incentive for merchants that do not offer um, single-use plastic bags. This simple policy could easily reduce Wichita's plastic consumption by 50%. When the city of Toronto implemented this policy, their plastic bag usage decreased by 215 million bags in three years. The second effective way to reduce plastic use is by banning plastics such as styrofoam and plastic straws. While styrofoam is a possible cancer-causing agent, it needs to be banned for its ability to create air pollutants when exposed to the sun. This pollutant can cause irritation of the eyes, the skin, the upper respiratory tract can cause gastrointestinal effects and can cause uh, kidney misfunction. A city ban on styrofoam would make it easier to keep our parks, rivers, and streets cleaner and reduce the risk of contaminants and water sources. Our second demand. We want to continue our history of leadership on the energy front, but we do not want it to be at the expense of our fellow Kansans. This means having more sources of renewable energy, which starts with encouraging solar energy. The state of Kansas has been working hard to put roadblocks in the way of renewable energy sources, such as solar energy. We need to make it clear we demand companies that are polluting our air for their profit be held accountable. We must show them that they lack a future here unless they invest in renewable energy. Instead, they are investing in lobbyists to keep us 20 years behind other cities. We do not want further protections for companies, even those headquartered in Wichita, that have spent $150 million in the last 20 years denying climate change. Right. Demand number three. We need sustainable management of waste. This starts with food waste. If we only begin, began to measure our food waste, we would know where to start. Many of these goals for similar cities are to decrease food waste by 50% by 2030. Decreasing food waste means investing in education, teaching families and companies how to intelligently manage their food waste. The current alternatives can be seen from West 96, from the artificial mountains of trash. Wichita is a city of innovation, and the council needs to act as such. There are simple solutions to these problems that start with uh, creating a committee on climate. It is not about having a cl clean future Wichita. At the rate climate change sinks deeper into a crisis, it becomes about having a future Wichita at all. Thank you. Thank you. Alice Fitzgerald, everyone. Thank you, Alice. The first step in the right direction is to create a climate action committee for the city of Wichita, a diverse team of experts from all backgrounds, so as to fairly represent our entire city. A committee that is willing to listen and work with the public to create a sustainable solutions that meet the needs of the public.
By implementing the solutions that Alice has laid out, we will improve the health for our community and its members, while also setting an example for other cities. An educated population is key to pursuing a more sustainable city, but blaming the people for consuming what is around them is not the answer. We must stop protecting the large corporations that produce the waste in mass with very few regulations. Yeah. 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 Our third speaker today is Jonathan Valeras, speaking about the disproportionate effects of climate change on people of color and how to provide support for those communities. Jonathan is a recent Wichita Public Schools graduate and upcoming college freshman. He plans to study environmental race environmental studies and ethnicity, race, and migration, and as a director of Kansas Youth for Climate Justice. All right. Thank you for that. During elementary and middle school, I went to a school on the north end of Wichita. Here, I made friends and was immersed in my culture as, in, as I was in a bilingual school. And I made memory mem many memories there, which I still cherish to this day. But I wish I forgot about the air that we breathed outside the building. Gusts of wind would bring over acrid vapors, which would pollute the neighborhood's air. <laughs> I continuously found myself training my nose to ignore the smells I was, as I was waiting outside for my mother to pick, up, pick me up from school in her blue truck, and, I was, and as I was running uh, through the neighborhood for my cross-country practices. This polluted air, however, was common to my friends and classmates who lived in the surrounding neighborhoods of the north end of Wichita. It is also important to know that the north end of Wichita is predominantly black and Hispanic demonstrating how environmental issues and pollution predominantly affects people of color, such as black, Hispanic, and indigenous communities. And of course, this pollution was caused by companies in the north end of Wichita, Cargill, among other uh, companies there, and demonstrating, again, that they prioritize profit over the well-being of our communities. Unfortunately, our own politicians engage with these companies and support them, even in climate issues, in the name of supporting the economy. And politicians continue to fail to consider the well-being of communities of color. Politicians, local and national, tend to support companies no matter how they fail us. When we talk about issues, politicians always promise solutions which are centered around the economy. The city of Wichita, for example, is bringing in a golf course to engage tourism and has also been um, extremely influential in bringing Amazon into the Wichita metropolitan area, ignoring all the ethical issues that come along with that, but also ignoring much more important issues, such as whole zip codes of residents left in food deserts. Same thing with the environment. Clean energy, energy, energy efficient plans, and environmental uh, committees are good, are great. But what good do these do to people who are already affected by climate change in our city? People of South, North, Northeast Wichita are subject to environmental racism, food deserts, and other issues related to climate change now. These policies don't take into account how the people are affected particularly those who are affected by climate change now. They only care about the economy, not about people's quality of life and how it is impacted today. They only care about making money, not the health or the well-being of people. But we deserve environmental policies, which are not only centered around getting to a net zero carbon emissions, but also repair and stop the damage that is done to communities of color. We cannot continue to uphold systems which do not benefit us. We should envision systems which are compassionate and are not focused on maintaining the status quo. We must envision a, a future which is just and equitable, equitable for all. And so I ask you all to be critical of the ways that environmental issues are talked about in Wichita and across the country. Ask yourselves, who do these policies benefit? And remember that we cannot rely on our current systems to solve the problems that have been spawned from them. As Audre Lorde said, the master's tools will not dismantle the master's house. We must innovate and support 
current projects in our city to bring some sort of justice to our communities. Give to the ICT Community Fridge Project right across the street at Dead Center Vintage. <laughs> Support what is ours is yours and solidarity, not charity. Organize in groups which are led by the people most affected by climate issues. Acting outside of our current paradigms is the only way that we will save our communities. Our communities deserve to live in harmony with the environment, to flourish and to thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan Valeras, everyone. One more time. Right. Pollution alters the way that we live, the air that we breathe, and the water that we drink. It is crucial to understand the disproportionate rates at which this pollution harms black and Hispanic people. Large companies have no understanding of the ways that they are actively harming our communities. And our leaders have failed to provide limitations for these corporations, leaving an already vulnerable population even more vulnerable. As Jonathan said, we cannot continue to uphold systems which do not benefit us. We should envision systems which are compassionate and are not focused on maintaining the status quo. We must envision a more just and equitable future for all. Our next speaker, Jared Husband, Hudson, will speak about representation of the working class in the conversations about sustainability. Jared is a rising senior at Wichita East High School. He currently serves as the policy director for Kansas Youth for Climate Justice, who is represented at a little table right over there. Go check them out. Jonathan, Jared, one more time, everyone, sorry. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jared Hudson, and I'm a 17-year-old from West Wichita. Obviously, I don't have a whole lot of first-hand experience with the racist systems in place in Wichita, especially not in the same way that Jonathan just spoke about. My neighborhoods were never filled with smoke from the Cargill spell. My tap water's always been safe enough to drink. What I do understand, however, is how desperately the working class has struggled and continues to struggle in a city some might think of as dying. My mother worked at Dillon's from the time she was 16 to the time she was 36 before becoming a para for Wichita Public Schools. In neither of these jobs was she granted a living wage, and even as a public servant today, she only barely earns above the federal poverty threshold for a single parent, three child household. My father's job history is mostly comprised of hard labor in the hot sun, freelance yard work, construction, handyman type jobs that typically don't pay well either. After the pandemic began and my great grandfather passed away, he had to quit his job to, to take care of his grandmother full time. Now, I am not detailing my sorry family history because I don't want anyone's pity or because I want to guilt trip anyone in the audience with a six figure salary. All I'm here to do is I want to redirect the focus of this entire movement for one small second. When I was invited to speak here, I heard everyone spiel about how we need to save the planet and protect Mother Nature and all the polar bears dying and the ice melting in the North Pole. And these are all good reasons to want to fight global warming, don't get me wrong. But one thing I felt deeply while listening to all these topics go by, topic after topic, was what about the people? What about, oh yeah, <laughs> sure I guess. What about the chronically poor, working class folks like my parents and my aunts and my uncles and my grandparents who work day in, day out at low paying jobs their entire lives? We've all dealt with empty platitudes from politicians all across the political scale who say that they have the secret ingredient to help lift us out of poverty or even better, that they have the secret ingredient to help us lift ourselves out of poverty by our bootstraps. Folks, lo and behold, poor folks are still here. Our bootstraps have practically fallen off because of how much lifting we've had to do ourselves. Politicians love... Okay, okay. Politicians love to talk about pro, uh, the economy, especially the economy, and bringing more jobs to a particular region, as if jobs will solve all the problems in a community. Especially in environmental circles here, even. Many politicians who advocate for clean and renewable energy boast about the number of jobs that will be created as some sort of selling point to those who don't see climate change as an immediate evil. 
X many jobs will be created, will be shut down as we uh, close down these companies, but Y jobs will be opened as we open new alternative clean energy alternatives. Because jobs are what matters apparently, and not the over 15% of Wichita experiencing poverty right now. I am not, even though I'm 17, I'm not that naive or sensitive to think that politics doesn't have to be pragmatic at times. But I'm very well aware that under our society's current economic system, jobs are important. I'm more aware of this fact maybe than some rich people who've always had jobs lined up with their family companies or other people who have never had to do freelance yard work to put food on the table for their kids at night. And with my background, all I'm asking here is that we, the working class folks of Wichita, be more treated with a little more respect in these conversations to the politicians who have proven time and time again that they have not worked in our best interests, do not reduce us to just jobs and workers. If you want to advocate for solutions to climate change, take into consideration our quality of life. Pay us a living wage, especially those you expect to work for the new clean energy initiatives you plan to create. Even more than that, bring us to the table to advocate for ourselves before you make decisions instead of disregarding us like ragdolls and expecting us to blindly follow you because of the power you hold. Do not let the only time you come into our neighborhoods be right before an election when you need our vote. <laughs> Far too often, this movement towards climate change, this movement against climate change and toward clean energy has been strictly tied to conservationism to recycling and banning plastic straws and saving the turtles without any acknowledgement of the day-to-day -day struggles we go through at the hands of greedy corporations and their political backers. Any further steps taken in Wichita need to be done so with everyone's best interest in mind, not just the Cokes and the Cargills and the other CEOs who treat us like dirt. We do not want any more big businesses eco-friendly or not, in Wichita, all in the name of a bolstering an economy so that we the people may be exploited and our work undervalued. All we want is a fair shot in life. Thank you for your time. David Hudson, everyone. Thank you, Jared, for making those excellent points about the importance of making this movement inclusive and giving everyone an opportunity to be heard. The ability for people to contribute to this conversation should never be determined by their socioeconomic standing or class. All of this information adds on to the need for a climate action committee to be diverse and consider the voices of all people. None of us are equal until all of us are equal. Representation is the first step in equitable solutions. We ask that the city of Wichita consider the well-being of the impoverished communities and communities of color just as much, if not more, than the companies that are actively harming them. Next up, we have Dolly Falha talking about, speaking about the water issues some Kansans have to face on a daily basis. Dolly is a born and raised Kansan, founder and coordinator of the Sunrise Wichita Hub, graduate of the Waring School in Massachusetts, and current student at Columbia College Chicago. Dolly is passionate about environmental justice and seeks to make Wichita a greener city, one step at a time. Dolly, everyone. I'm so sorry I had to do that. You understand. Hey, y'all. My name is Dolly Farha, and I'm 18 years old. For the past year, I have been living in Belle Plaine, Kansas. So maybe you've heard of us. We're a city of 1,200 with no hospital or grocery store. I was shocked in February of 2021 to receive a letter from the city of Belle Plaine informing me that the water was no longer safe to drink for children. The water had tested above the maximum federal levels for nitrates, nitrates that can't be filtered out, can't be boiled off. My neighbor told me it wasn't a big deal that it happens fairly regularly around here, that it was just runoff. And you know what? She was mostly right. It does happen fairly regularly. This year wasn't the first time the people of Belle Plaine received a letter like that. And it is due to agricultural runoff, toxic fertilizers that creep into our wells and poison our families. But she was wrong about one thing. It is a big deal. 
So I followed the trail and I researched some of the water health crises that have plagued Kansas in the past. Dry cleaner chemicals, the ones that can cause cancer and kidney and liver failure, were in private wells for six years. Kansas had the fifth highest levels of THMs in the country. That contaminant can cause bladder cancer, skin cancer, and can harm fetal growth and development. So that letter I got back in February, that letter explaining to the residents of Belle Plaine that for some people the water was sort of safe to drink, and for others not so much, that was the breaking point for me. I believe that every human has the right to clean water, food, and shelter. I believe that we cannot deny our neighbors these rights or pretend it's not a big deal when chemicals find their way to our water towers. We have normalized pollution. We have normalized agricultural runoff. We have normalized poisoned water. In my 18 years, I have left Kansas twice, each time swearing I would never return. My classmates in school said the same thing that they were vying for bigger cities to live in with more jobs, better infrastructure, travel opportunities. They claim that Wichita is a dying city. They were desperate to leave, to start their life somewhere else, to escape from this place, and all because they couldn't see a future here. By chance, I have found myself in Kansas once again. Third time's the charm, right? I realize now that I was wrong before. I will always return to Wichita, to Belle Plaine, to Kansas, because this is worth fighting for. And the future I see ahead, it's murky. We face a lot of resistance, uphill battles in the prairie sun, and great tension amongst our people, but that doesn't mean it isn't worth fighting for. I believe that Wichita can become something great, and I'm gonna watch that change happen with my own eyes. But to start, we need clean water, clean air, clean food. These are our basic rights, our fundamental rights, and we will come back and scream it till every person in this state, country, and world is granted it. Those killed in Belle Plaine who drank poison water this year, those residents are speeches because of our ages, who think that we're too young to care about this who think that we are too inexperienced to be up here speaking about this crisis, who think that we don't know what we're talking about. To you, I say this. You gave us no choice. We are young and afraid, and that is why we are standing up here, desperate to fight for our futures and the future of this state. We are the ones looking generations ahead of us and hoping that the lives of our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren will not be mutilated by the global crisis we are facing. We don't have time to be kids anymore. We have to fight for the futures you are denying us. You gave us no choice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dolly. Dolly is completely right. We should not have to be fighting for basic necessities to live. No one should ever have to fear not being able to drink clean water. Yet, it is constantly happening. It is time for our leaders to be truthful to their communities. Our next speaker is Sean Wentling, who will be speaking about our farmers and the effects of climate change on agriculture in Kansas. Sean Wedling is an incoming freshman at Wichita State University, studying economics and international studies. Just like many of you, Sean is exhausted from all the misinformation that drives the ever-growing divide between agriculture and the climate action. He believes our farmers are harmed the most by climate change, evidenced by drastic weather patterns, periods of sustained drought, and polarized temperature fluctuations. By getting our farmers on board, we can grow our coalition further and secure a better Kansas for all of us and our children. Thank you. Good morning. Good job to y'all. Y'all me all riled up. But the bad part about being last speaker is it means that my legs are half asleep. Farmers and I... will have to grapple with sporadic weather conditions ranging from periods of sustained, sustained drought to historically unparalleled cold spells, just as we saw this past spring with our freeze, both of which will render the soil eventually virtually infertile for all crops and wildlife, meaning that all farmers suddenly will have no job, no livelihood, livelihood, and Kansas for them will have no value anymore. Historically, 
as has been aforementioned, our elected officials have looked the other way with respect to corporate greed and ecocide, deciding that either the task is far too great to surmount, which is completely a fallacy, or the donations from said corporations and their lobbyists are comparatively advantageous when juxtaposed to an uninhabitable world. We need to have these conversations with these people that believe that our strategies are not right, that either change cannot be made, or that it's too big of a problem to surmount. By having those conversations with farmers and people that don't believe in us, we build our coalition from 10 to 50 to 100 to 1,000 until our entire country is overtaken with this movement. And we can actually make change because the politicians are not gonna do it themselves. I commend the few that are ready to make change but you have to make change now as we're already seeing the effects of climate change. In addition, the organizations here have my utmost respect for being part of this organization and taking this on as their own initiative. The work we're doing is part and partial of one of the greatest, boldest, most courageous moments in history. And to those who may be uncertain of our mission or know the people, people that have the exact same disbeliefs or do not have the exact same courage and faith that you do, please tell them this, that the calculus is clear. If we do nothing, we will die. Kansas will have no value for people that want to have it have value, for people that want our children and our children's children to stay here. There will be no reason to stay here. We're going to eventually have resource wars over water and it needed resources just because that is all going away with climate change. And current crises will continue to be exacerbated. At the same time, just as we made the great leap into an economy at the turn of the century, this exact same switch to renewable resources will be both economically beneficial for us and for other people around the entire country. It will be cognizant of the grand investments and economic benefits which those resources would bear. I just want to end this with one saying. The earth is not a credit to us. It is a loan from our kids. And I ask every one of you, are you able to have that debt to bear? Because I'm not able to do that. All right, all right. Thank you, Sean. As Sean pointed out, our oath may not explode into a ball of fire. However, the damaging effects of climate change have the power to destroy, destroy Kansas' agriculture as we know it, in turn taking down our economy. Food and water insecurities have already become more common, in part due to these changes. We have the power to stop this destruction in its path by joining together in demanding climate justice. And finally, for our final speaker today, please give it up to our very own MC, Marissa Rapp. Okay. Just to summarize kind of the events and the speeches that we've heard here today, I would like to say the first step in the right direction is to create a climate action committee for the city of Wichita, a diverse team of experts from all backgrounds that fairly represents our entire city. A committee that is willing to listen and to work with the public to create sustainable solutions that meets the needs of the public. By implementing all of these solutions, we will improve the health of our community and its members, while also setting an example for other cities. An educated population, once again, is key to solutions. Blaming the people for consuming what is around them is never the answer. We must stop protecting the large corporations that produce, produce the waste in mass with very few regulations. Our leaders have failed to provide limitations for these large corporations, once again leaving an already vulnerable population way more vulnerable. The ability for people to contribute to this conversation should never be determined by their socioeconomic standing or class, race or gender identity. Nobody should have to be fighting for basic necessities or have to prove, our, prove to our politicians why their needs matters. It is time for our leaders to be truthful to their communities. Once again, our earth may not explode into a ball of fire at this very moment. However, the damaging effects of climate change have the power to destroy Kansas' agriculture as we know it, disrupting our economy and basically our way of life. Food and water insecurities have already become more common due to these changes. We have the power to stop this destruction in its path by joining together and demanding climate justice just as we are doing today. So thank you all for being here once again. <laughs>